Moving on to, to what you've talked about in terms of the dynamics between the, the accountants there, I was interested to read uh, a couple of days ago that there's a, there's a UK accounting firm that, that's on selling Zero um, as part of a, a bundled service, yep. um, software plus services. Um, talking about your, your sales matrix, how much is going to come from those kind of partnership type deals and how much from direct into the client? Yeah, so um, one of the bits of market research we did right at the beginning was we found that in 80% of cases where the small business had an accountant, the accountant chose the software. So accountants are absolute gatekeepers and validators in our market. Uh, but you know, accountants are conservative as well, and they operate in a few different modes. They operate uh, for a large number of businesses in, in compliance mode. So the drivers there are taking cost out of that process so they can earn more margin for the customer and hopefully upsell them into other sort of consulting services. We also see a segment of the accounting market who really doesn't want to do too much of that compliance but become more of that virtual trusted advisor. And that's really exciting for accountants, you know, with this credit crunch thing going on. Um, you know, I think we'll see the accountants able to do all sorts of other services to the small business owner. You know, they are, are the most trusted advisor in the research we've seen, so they can look at introducing business finance and all sorts of other things as well. So um, there's definitely a, a change. Um, we've had great feedback from the, from the accounting um, partners, but they've also been cautious, wanting to make sure that we deliver on our promises. And with software as a service, delivering stuff every two or three weeks, I think you accelerate those trust relationships, and that's what we've seen happening. So we saw a really big acceleration of customers coming into that natural changeover period at the end of the financial year, and uh, I think that accounting strategy has worked. Okay. Um, in, t in, terms of, in terms of your strategy and your market, um, we've seen some, some big players maybe into the SaaS accounting space. You know, people like NetSuite and, and um, MYOB have, have kind of announced that they're going to be doing a SaaS product and that's a, that's a validation for what you're doing. But w with that pressure from the top and with quite a lot of, um, of uh, free or very cheap services for the, for the lower end stuff, do you see that Xero's kind of market is being squeezed a little? Oh no, I'm like it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think, um, what people realise is that accounting systems are actually quite substantial and you can look as if you've got a full accounting system but once you drill into all of the scenarios they're, they actually, um, it's very hard to short circuit the stuff. You know, we've had uh, you know, quite a lot of developers working on this for a period of time and we're you know, getting through it now so um, you know, real robust accounting systems do take time to build. Um, the big boys, um, I don't think they really understand the small business market. They don't have a small business, they don't really understand how to sell. You, know? you look at what uh, NetSuite spent in marketing last, you know, in the, the last quarter of last year, it was $15 million to add uh, net 200 new customers. And uh, you, know, you can see all of the material about them on the web is a high level of dissatisfaction. So I think it's difficult for the traditional providers to scale down. It's much easier for us new providers to scale up, I believe, and uh, I think we're seeing that. In terms of that functionality and that scaling, I guess my, my last question is that we get quite a lot of inquiries um, from, from businesses that are, that are more in a, a product business, um, and obviously Zero at the moment is, is pretty much focused towards service businesses. So those questions about inventory and assets and things like that, yep. those are on the horizon? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, um, yeah, but there's things that you wouldn't do in a web-based product. So things like point of sale doesn't really suit a web-based application. It's quite a different business. It's about getting printers and FPOS terminals and all those things working. But there's no reason why we can't partner with those firms. So we're seeing lots of opportunities with the Zero Network where you know people who have specific vertical applications or horizontal applications like point of sale do their bit really well, and then they um, can interface their data you know seamlessly through the web to our sort of backend general ledger. So we don't have to you know win every market. Um, you know, at the moment, we're probably better for service-based businesses. Businesses, but uh, a real target of ours is the integrated uh, job costing and time recording, which uh, is a big investment for us this year. And in terms of inventory for, for product business, not so much point of sale, but um, it would be basic inventory. But again, I think you know if you're doing detailed inventory, that's normally a subsidiary ledger. You might have barcode scanning and check in, check out. I think that's probably not a web app, but. There's no reason why we can't work with uh, partners in, in, in that area. We, we really want to build 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 a web-based engine to support all of those partners. And we're seeing that we've got fantastic uh, people who have job tracking and sort of handheld devices uh, today interfacing with zero, um, uh, like SalesLink. You know, uh, so there's you know we're we're kind of working uh, with partners that are already in, the, in that space, and that's you know and that feels really good. So we'll do some we'll do basic stuff, but I think there will always be people that build you know specific modules that have specific functionality that more suits uh, particular industries, but we'd love to be the GL that operates behind the scenes. Okay, Rob, well, uh, thanks for your time and um, best of luck. We'll Great, be watching thanks for your interest. Yeah, it's good.